two, one. All right. So here we are. I'm live today with Manu. Uh, Manu is the founder of Money on Chain. Uh, I'm super excited about today's call. So Manu, how are you today? I'm great. Great. This is a sunny day in Buenos Aires. It's summer. It's, it's a very nice day. Uh, 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 well, today we are in, in, in a dip uh, of 30,000. So <laughs> it's a strange dip. <laughs> Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, yeah, no, I heard there was a bit of a dip. I checked the charts. Uh, well, that's the good thing about not caring about the all time high. <laughs> I still have news because uh, yeah. I, I, I'm always living in an all time high anyway. For, because <laughs> you and me both, buddy, you and me both. Um, so, 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 Manu, I was gonna ask you, um, well, you know, as a level set, I usually start with where did we meet or when did we meet? So, we're, we're, we're fairly new acquaintances, even though uh, I feel like, uh, you know, we're brothers from different mothers. Um, but I feel like we, we, so we, we have met in the last maybe month or so or something like that. I think we were introduced we, by that. We had a, a call a couple of, uh, I think like one, one week ago, and we met through, uh, I think Bruno from Defiant mentioned me, and, and I think Dieguito from RSK mentioned. Yes, uh, yeah, so the RSK Bank. guys. Yes, yes, yes. They've been talking uh, yeah, about you. I, I saw you in La Bitconf. I saw your, your talk in, in La Bitconf. I, 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 and, and Gabriel Kurman from Gaku. From from RSK also mentioned mentioned you and all a lot of the people in the RSK community uh, is talking great things about you and actually I was re reading uh, reading about uh, Unicoin uh, many months ago before anyone mentioned you. Cool, <laughs> cool. I saw, uh, because I, I saw this uh, this uh, trial in India and I was uh, is so crazy and 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 I really really glad to 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 when i we finally met a couple of uh, days ago and, and to be able to talk with you oh yeah the right. yeah, likewise likewise i'm uh, it's i'm excited so um you know, we're obviously going to talk about money on chain, right? Uh, I want to talk about that in depth. But before, I always say, you know, the one, Bitcoin is just ones and zeros, right? It's really the people behind it that that make it possible. Um, and so, I am now kind of fascinated <laughs> by people's stories, right? Because like, uh, and you know, some people start their stories, uh, you know, three generations ago. Some people start with their first job. But really interested, kind of as the first part of this interview, and you know, not like uh, what's your story, uh, thirty second elevator pitch, so we can quickly get to the all time highs. Or today, I guess it's not the all time high, <laughs> the thirty thousand, whatever. But uh, rather, you know, the opposite of that, which is like, uh, if we didn't have a time limit, uh, what 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 does your story look like? Well, uh, I would say not the short story, the the more long story. It's uh, it started like. Uh, 16 years ago, I, I did an MBA in 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 a in a business school here in in Argentina. Uh, uh -huh. and there I met uh, the the other co-founder of Money and Chain, which is one of the other co-founders, which is Max Carcusa. And, mm -hmm. and we we made friends. He he was always uh, he, he was trading and and doing he, his uh, computer science. So always I I, I work in. In IT, in technology, I come from a business mm. background, but all my life I work in in, in IT and tech companies. So I, I get friends a lot with with people from computer sciences, and especially he also was a, a lot business minded. So we we got friends, and we have a, a group of ex uh, um, ex MBAs, and we were always talking. Uh, about different things, and he was always uh, a cup man. Like ten years ago, he won. I think he was, uh, up to my knowledge, he's one of the first speakers in Argentina, the public speakers uh, teaching, educating about Bitcoin. He started to to talk about Bitcoin in a quite well known university, a business university here in 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 Argentina. So he was doing conferences about Bitcoin in like. 2013, uh, actually pre previous to the, the organization of the Bitcoin NGO, uh, he was always talking about Bitcoin. Um, uh, 
a couple of uh, years uh, ago, in 2016, we we worked together. And I, I before before that, I was working in SAP, and I, I leave my job, and we worked together in in for 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 a government. And he was always telling me it was a it, it, it is in, in it was for for a, a government position, but building houses for shanty towns in 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 Argentina. It was I help on on I have my life in in politics one <laughs> before my my Bitcoin my Bitcoin life. Uh, and it was like a an 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 uh, <clears throat> I went out from corporation and to work to, to help the government mainly. And he was always telling me, you know Manu, I'm losing a lot of money because I'm working with you and helping you and I say oh well, well, uh, yeah yes sure and what you you will be doing well I, I'm, I'm I'm with Bitcoin I'm doing this and at what and at, at one moment and ask him okay but tell me a little bit more and we had a talk like two hours talking about Bitcoin and at the end as always what backs Bitcoin what what, what is behind Bitcoin intrinsic well, value Nothing. <laughs> uh, so I come before Tech. I work for for banking. So for me, it was like these people using digital money uh, backed by anything. This is too crazy for me. It is. It, 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 this is not going to work. But what year is this? Uh, sorry. Where? What year are we in now? It, it's 20, 20, 2016. 20, 2016. Okay. 2016. Yes. And, and well, after the government, I, I it was a short period in the government. I went back to SAP where I was working before the, the German firm, uh, the, the technology German firm. Uh, I as was, a programmer, or what was your no, main? My, my my I, I started more as a, a as a consultant, business consultant. You know, in SAP, most of the development yep. is is done in Germany, and mm -hmm. and I was more. A, I started with implementation, but then on 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 mainly on on on, on sales, but sales of what's called a custom development is is uh, is what if you are a big big uh, company in Latin America or anywhere in the world and you want something special uh, made only for you, you call this this business unit that is innovation services that build software specially for you. So it's it was. Is is like a mix of the of the uh, it's like the a software factory, but then afterwards they sell you the the and they might maintain the software. So it was the I would say it's like the front end with the with the development from SAP to mm -hmm. or big firms. If if you want something special, well, they they, they call us. They they were calling us. So in in that innovation, uh, we know uh, you you always were with last technology. So, so in a, re a global meeting, actually, it came the the global head of innovation services of SAP. It was also by the end of 2016, and he said, "Well, big data, uh, machine learning, uh, blah, uh, this this, and blockchain." So this is the five technologies that are going to change the world in the next 20 years. Mm. So blockchain, okay, blockchain. So blockchain, Bitcoin, I heard blockchain, Bitcoin. I called my friend, Max. Max, we need to build something with blockchain. So Max <laughs> always, <laughs> he told me, no, you still don't understand anything at all. It's not blockchain, it's Bitcoin. No, but SAP, no, A SAP doesn't understand anything at all. It's not blockchain, it's Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> so we discuss like uh, 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 no, but it is an opportunity. Actually, I, let me present you to SAP, and you can come to work to SAP. I'm not interested at all. I don't care a <laughs> shit about SAP. It's boring. This is not going to change anything. So all the discussion. So it was a discovery, and then he sent me to read about Nick Savo and read the mm. white paper, and I, I learn and I learn and I learn and I read. Um, and 
then we he, he Max is one of the person who helped to build uh, what is called Mercado Pago. Mercado Pago is like um, like a PayPal in Latin America. It's one of the digital payments in Latin America. It's huge, huge. It's, it's part of Mercado Libre. Mercado Libre is like the eBay, but from Latin America. So it's, it's the payment system uh, in Latin America. The most popular payment system in Latin America is Mercado Pago. So, so he, and before that, he worked in American Express. So he, he really knows about uh, payment systems. Hmm. And we, we talked for several months and we thought, well, let's build um, a, a PayPal crypto, but with Bitcoin. And the problem for, for building this PayPal crypto was that there was no stable coin with Bitcoin because people is, you know, the volatility is not something that people use for, for if you, you, it's very difficult to trade with Bitcoin because of the volatility. So we researched, uh, actually he had this project about uh, building a stable coin for several years. And he's, he told me about this idea of building money, a, a, a stable coin backed by Bitcoin. And we discussed it for a lot of time. And well, that's how I went into Bitcoin and how we started to building money on chain. So it's a, it's, that's not the, sh the short story. That's the long story. And I really, as I mentioned, I think the last time we, we talked, when I really make a click with Bitcoin, as I mentioned before, I, I was 20 years working in SIP, in, in really big corporations, with all my money in bank accounts, all clear, all, all, all normal. And when we built Money on Chain, it was my, one of my first en entrepreneurial experiences. I, I needed to make a payment to United States from Argentina. It was in the previous government where there were no so many capital restrictions. So I called my bank and said, I have to pay something in US. Okay, but then you, you, you need to fill all these forms. Okay, send me the forms. I, I fill all the forms. Okay, but you need to come to the branch and sign a, a document. I need to go to the branch. It's, I live 60 kilometers from my branch. But yes, you need to come and, and to sign something. Ridiculous. I, I went there and then they asked for many uh, tax uh, declarations. So it was like, stupid that this is my money i want to send it to whoever i want i worked 20 years and, and this was previous to the really capital control that now if i want to send dollars to some some other country in the world mm. the first difficulty in argentina now is to buy dollars is is you are not allowed to to buy uh, dollars but at that moment really i i really understood that all the lies that are we with I really understood that it's not your money when you put it in a third party is is you you are lending the money and they keep it and they do whatever they want so that's when I really understood the the importance of sovereignty of of, of really holding your money mm -hmm. and do whatever you you need and 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 that's really when I understood that what we were doing in Money on Chain for, with this protocol and what actually what Bitcoin is doing is something that can change the, the, the lives of billions of people because of very, very basic liberties. Mm. It's, it's, it's about freedom. It's, it's, for me, it's more a political movement mm. than, than anything else. All the rest is nice. Price at 30, 40, whatever, great. But if you live in a in a country like, I don't know, well, you 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 are from India. In, in at one moment, the government said you cannot hold or whatever. Why? Money is a, a very, very basic technology that humanity needs. Mm. And should not be controlled by 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 governance. It's, it's, it, and, digi and we live in a digital world. So 
now we need digital money for having a digital world. And I don't think that is right for anybody to control what you have done. So that's how I came to, to Bitcoin. Interesting, interesting. <laughs> and, and so just to kind of, well, I mean, there's a lot, but, but just one thing I want to uh, clarify. So, um, you know, because some people maybe know, maybe don't worry. I mean, a lot of people are still learning. I mean, there's a lot of new people coming into the space. So just as a level set, so one of the phenomenons that we've seen, obviously, is this thing called stable coin, right? I think that's kind of the yeah. famous thing. So Tether being the most famous one, I think USDC, uh, there were some recent uh, announcements, I think even uh, with some regulators, OCC or something like that in the United States, it said that these stable coins are, our banks are allowed to essentially use them to some extent um, for, for, I guess, swift like uh, payments. And so it's just fascinating what's happening. Um, and, and one of the, I guess you could say, question marks um, around these stable coins has been, well, if, you, if I guess around Tether has been, you know, the centralization of it, uh, you know, is, is always, I think, one thing that some people are concerned about. Um, and then I think on the on the other kind of newer revolutions of, you know, on Ethereum, people ask about, well, you know, is Ethereum really the best bet, you know, in terms of like security? So I guess to sum it all up, uh, money on chain is, is trying to build a stable coin on top of Bitcoin, right? Just using Bitcoin and Bitcoin's ecosystem and code that resides on top of Bitcoin, leverages Bitcoin mining and all the whole Bitcoin network to do a stable coin, right? Is that kind of the, the gist of it or am I uh, you yes, know, butchering the, it? The, the main idea is to build a, a, a protocol software that allows to build a stable coin that is censorship resistant. The biggest difference is that this is run by code and not by, there is no counterparty risk uh, in the sense of Tether or USDC or whatever. Uh, what you have there is a, is a huge counterparty risk and many, many risks. Uh, maybe Tether is okay, but uh, suppose that Tether is okay, but it, that money is in a bank at the end. So maybe the, the Tether team, the technology is great, but suppose it was in Lehman Brothers, the dollars. So if Lehman Brothers go, goes uh, bust, Tether, whatever they have the, in the team, uh, it all, uh, also is going to go bust. So it, there is many, many uh, risk involved in any of these uh, uh, centralized stable, stable coins. Uh, but the main risk is that at the end you have a lot of uh, of uh, um, uh, counterparty risks. Uh, in our main purpose is to make this completely uh, living in a in a protocol, living in internet as as possible, uh, as similar as Bitcoin. And sorry, I don't know if you are listening, my dog. It's in the. Oh, I can hear. Him. Do, you want, do you want me to pause it for a bit, or is he I, is it okay? We can pause it one minute. Yeah, I'll pause I, it. Okay, we're back. Okay, so no, if not, we will have the, the music of my dog barking all, all, the, all the show. <laughs> but uh, yes, as I was explaining, uh, the, 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 main, the main focus, the, the main objective is to have a trust minimize, minimized uh, protocol as, as, as uh, I, mm -hmm. I love that, that concept that Nick Sabo talks about. Trust minimization is, you know, trustless doesn't exist. You always have to trust something. You in Bitcoin, you need to trust the 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 the, 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 the Bitcoin developers. You have to trust at the end the miners. There is several mm -hmm. uh, things that you at the end as a Bitcoiner you are using. You, you need to trust. But the idea is to trust as less as possible in in, in one person that can change the rule unilaterally mm -hmm. uh, and from from our objective is trying to build a stable coin that requires much less levels of of trust uh, and the objective is to use bitcoin as 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 main uh, asset as reserve asset to issue this stable coin so that's what's that's the idea behind money on chain and that's actually what we launched uh, like one year ago and it's 
it's running, it's working. So uh, we are very happy. <laughs> Okay, so let's. Uh, yeah, no, I'm. I'm excited for you guys. That's 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 a that's a great. Uh, you know, interesting, interesting. So, how, how do you? Um, you know, the last time we were chatting, you were kind of breaking down for me, the different elements, if you will. Uh, I thought it was very clever because I think most people, they're probably like, what? Like, first of all, I don't think even most people know that you can write uh, smart contracts on top of Bitcoin, right? So as a result, I've been trying to, you know, interview guys like uh, the RSK guys and Diego and Gabriel and and trying to get people more aware of this project and, you know, more eyeballs on it because I'm personally fascinated by it. And uh, so, so there's, so I guess it's built on top of RSK. Is that correct? Or yeah. Yes, my engine is is a, a protocol. It's, it's lines of, of code building what's called smart contracts. So it's solidity, it's code, uh, and it's running on RSK. RSK is a second layer of Bitcoin. Of course, uh, Bitcoin layer one doesn't support the the, the level of complexity mm. programming that is needed for, for example building a, a software, a protocol like the money on chain protocol. So you need an, another uh, piece in the middle, which is uh, uh, a, a blockchain like, like RSK. So money on chain is running on, on, on RSK. RSK uses uh, the, 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 the biggest difference, I would say, of, of RSK is that the native, the native currency of RSK is smart Bitcoin, is RBTC. And the only way to produce one smart Bitcoin is to produce it uh, with Bitcoin. You have to lock Bitcoins in the Bitcoin main chain and then it's, 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 it's uh, liberated uh, smart Bitcoins on the, on the RSK blockchain. I think that Yegito might have explained it that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in a little bit detail in, in, in the podcast before. But yes, this software is running in a, in a Bitcoin sidechain. Of course, mm -hmm. uh, this could run also in, in, in Ethereum, in, in, other, uh, in other blockchains. But at the moment when we decided to build a Manium chain, the, yeah. Only, yeah. the only possibility to make this was on other scale. The only place where there was a, a Bitcoin running in a blockchain was in other scale. And we love uh, our escape project for many, many reasons. One of the main reasons is that it, it has this process of merge mining. So each time you use uh, RSK, the, uh, the, the blockchain are mined by the same miners that mine Bitcoin. Hmm. So what you are doing, you are subsidizing the Bitcoin network. So if you are using RSK, not for money on chain, for whatever you use, RSK, mm. you are subsidizing the, the usage of, of Bitcoin because you are adding an additional uh, revenue stream for Bitcoin miners. Interesting. Okay. okay. So in a way, uh, if you you are supporting, and this is as when you started this this podcast, you, you said Bitcoin is a social movement, and I really think it is a social movement. We we as as a friend says. Uh, we are all Satoshi at the end. Uh, so if you are a Satoshi and you are want to contribute con contribute to Bitcoin project, well, one way to, to do that is using a Bitcoin sidechain mm -hmm. because you are contributing to Bitcoin at the end. So yes, it is built in a second layer uh, and it uses this RBTC as collateral, which are smart Bitcoins. And the only way to produce RBTC is with Bitcoin. You have to lock a Bitcoin in the in the layer one and then it's liberated in the in the layer two interesting interesting um hey i wanted to just ask you about one thing did you hear the news today about the white paper no sorry I oh okay okay that's okay no no but uh anyways it's it's um it's kind of interesting top of mind you know i'm sure for a lot of people so the bitcoin white paper so there's this website called bitcoin.org have you been there yeah, it's like yeah, it's like you. i don't know i mean i always considered it as one of the main repositories well, that's where i usually point people to when i when i tell them about the white paper um was taken down today oh <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, there was, I think it was in response to a, uh, like some sort of legal action taken by Craig Wright and all these guys from the BSV side. 
they, they make me fun. Uh, I don't know. It, it, it's so ridiculous for me. Is is like it, it's a, a, a but that, that's how the work works. It, it's 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 full of clowns. Um, well, you have to. It, it's something you can laugh at. Uh, I don't know. I I. I Anyway, anyway, that, <laughs> I, it's so ridiculous nowadays you build another one and we can call it whatever we want it, it's so so this it's uh, open source and anyways i you know I, maybe i'll share this story on another podcast but i i you know i like to I like to be close to everything, just watch everything. And and uh, they actually had a, they as in Craig Wright and them had a big uh, BSV conference here in Toronto. I think, I don't remember a year or two ago, I attended and did, didn't attend the actual conference, but just showed up to some of the things afterwards just to see who they were and whatnot. But it, it's just, it's just comical to me. I think the whole thing, I just, I just, it just, it breaks my heart mainly because of, you know, cause, cause there's like people in between who have been doing a lot of hard work and they're kind of in the crossfires. And I don't know, that, that always, you know, pains me a bit, but anyways, Manu, let, let, let's, let's, we'll leave that for another, uh, you know, conversation. I want to get back on, uh, so money on chain. So, so I was going to say, you know, you were, uh, you know, you were kind of explaining how the ecosystem works. Cause like in my head, it's like, okay. You just made this, we made this claim that you could do stable coins on top of Bitcoin within Bitcoin. There's a lot to take in there, but how does, um, like, how does it work? Like, how does it work? How do you do it with, because you said you did it in a, I like that word too, trust minimize way, right? So you're looking at every angle. And I think, you know, the, the Bitcoin white paper thing I brought up is kind of an example of how we think Bitcoin is super decentralized and robust, but you know what I mean? Like you really have to think about like when it comes to the code and the code we build and the infrastructure we build on top of Bitcoin, especially we got to think about how to minimize, you know, trust requirements at every edge. And so, yeah. So just curious about that, like how, how that's being done. Well, the reality is, is really complex. It's not easy. When we started, I, I always remember Max, uh, my partner, saying, well, this is a very simple financial <laughs> method how we are going to build this telecom. And at the end, uh, it's not so simple. Mm. Uh, when we, we Now, uh, I'm not going to talk about all the roadmap, how we finish with this model, but the model now is, Behind the protocol, there is a financial model. Yes. Uh, we, we, we work a lot on how we can make this, uh, this, this work. So uh, for anyone to be able to mint a dollar on chain, a stable coin using this protocol, before uh -huh. that person, someone else have to add the collateral. And how he adds the collateral, he sends smart Bitcoins, for, for making simplification and will be maybe I will be talking about Bitcoin. He's saying Bitcoins or a smart Bitcoins to the protocol and he received another token which is called Bitpro. Bitpro is a, a token that represents the collateral in the system. Okay. And once you have uh, at least four uh, dollars in Bitcoin, the, the, the system, the protocol allows someone else to issue a dollar on chain. Okay, so there is a level of uh, of collateralization. Uh, make it similar to, to if you have a bank and you want to issue do dollars or whatever currency and you have a reserve gold. So if you put gold as 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 asset for 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 saying, well, if the price of gold goes down, the the this gold will represent at least. The, the dollars that we are issuing. So uh, there is the, always the, the, the collateral is Bitcoin, is digital gold. So someone else can issue a digital uh, dollars, but the, the reserve, the collateral is Bitcoin. And that collateral we call Bitpro. So there is a, a big over collateralization. And why is that over collateralization? Because if the price of Bitcoin goes down, this should always have a reserve. Okay. So that, that's the Bitpro. And this is the dollar. 
And on top of that, th that was the, the first model that we have, only these two actors. So well, I just had curiosity, would, would people be would people be wrecked then today or whatever? Or, and these days, like when there's like a 20% well, no, correction or is it a function the, of what, what kind the, of contracts they partake in? Or sorry, how does that work? The, there is first, if only it was only these two actors, this, uh, this B Pro gets uh, what in financial world is called leverage. What happens is if the price of Bitcoins uh, of Bitcoin uh, goes up, the Bpro will go up higher, much faster. And if the price of Bitcoin goes down, it will go down much faster. If there is a lot of collateral, that leverage uh, is, is, uh, is not so big because you have a lot of collateral, so the leverage is small. But what we have included as a third actor is traders. So now you have a, a third actor, which are people looking for a lot of leverage. Hmm. <laughs> That's what we call the BTCX. So in, when we have this third actor, the BTCX takes part of the leverage from the BPRO B and hmm. he pays a rent. He pays a fee for getting that leverage. That the BPRO have gotten that leverage for free. So now the B Pro in the end is a token that has a little bit of leverage. So normally it's 1.1, 1 1.5. It's, it's variable. It depends on, on the demand of the other actors. Mm -hmm. But uh, on average, it, it, it been historically in this, this last year, and there is certain incentives on the, on the rates of each product for having a leverage of 1.1 and up to now the historic leverage of this token the, the bpro was 1.1 so you have these three actors and the end what you have is a stablecoin a token that is meant is designed especially for big bitcoin holders that are looking for long term and they are okay on having a little bit of leverage so uh, in the long run, in a bull run, for example, the Bpro will win the, the, the price of Bitcoin. And in this case, the traders, the BTCX, has a lot of risk. It's a, it's a leverage position. But this is really, they, they, they take mo most, for example, uh, in these last three days, the price of Bitcoin went down 6%. And now mm -hmm. the BTCX is 12% down. Right. So they are getting all, all the most of the risk, hmm. uh, and this been working for, for we we obviously be, we designed a, a a financial model, we built it a, a simulation machine uh, to run this uh, financial model. We run all the simulation of all the history of Bitcoin to see if this history of volatility will support this model. The support of this model. Then we run, we build the software, we launch the, the software, and we have the biggest crash in March last year, and it was business as usual. So, if when, when people ask me what is really different with Money on Chain against other stablecoin, mm -hmm. I would say the, this financial model is unique, it's new, it's, it's something that no one else before have designed. Actually, we work with two PhD in finance uh, for building this. Actually, not for building. Building this was mainly uh, my partner, which is, uh, you know, the, 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 the movie, uh, Bright, Bright, Bright Mind. Uh, well, he's a, he's a yeah. man. He, 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 he's he's uh, an extraterrestrial. Uh, you know, he has this idea that I, I, I say, <laughs> okay, and, and we work with these two PhD from this business school uh, in finance, and we, we said, well, we need help to, to confirm that all this is going to work, and they, they help us to, to validate the, the financial model behind, and then we had to write the, you know, everybody writes the white paper, obviously we write the white paper after we have wrote in all the code, and my partner was I don't give a, sorry, uh, you know, he doesn't care about, so much about, but it's something that, well, you need to have a white paper. And um, okay, we, but you need references on the white paper. And we call this to a PhD. And so we need reference. What, what are the reference we need to put in this white paper? 
Oh, this is no, no reference. This is an invention from Max. It's, it's really, it's, it's, uh, it's, something, it's something new. So this is something that the most different thing on maybe on money on chain is that we have been able to design a, a financial model that can support having a stable coin with a very, very volatile asset as a reserve. Because issuing a tether is very easy. If you have dollar and you issue a dollar, it's very easy. Financial model is one to one. The only thing is no one runs with your money, with the collateral. In this case, what you need to, to understand is that this financial model should work. And I don't know of any other financial model that works la 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 like this. Okay. Mm. Actually, if you see all the other protocols, uh, there was some other protocols with other collateral. Uh, they have to change the, their system to add stable coins back by by fiat because the financial model didn't work. Mm. Interesting. Interesting. So, uh, so uh, can you just summarize quickly though, what, what were those different um, uh, kind of, I guess, actors? So there's like, I guess, traders, like you said, in this ecosystem, and this is all being governed by smart contracts, right? It's not happening on some server again, like on some centralized server. Uh, this is literally right happening. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. And so there are these different, so I guess just to summarize in layman's terms, you're, you're essentially like incentivizing different actors within this ecosystem to, um, to trade with one another, to do, to take different actions, to to ensure that the price of those tokens are stable at the whatever you know fiat currency that they're looking to um, peg towards. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, the 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 system being has in mind three different kind of uh, actors. Mm. One is the, and and some sometimes it could be one person could be in the shoes of different actors. For example, I have a little right. bit of several coins for paying the pizza or for paying my bills. So in, I live in a very, very inflationary country mm. and I don't want to have my money in a very inflationary uh, money. And I, I want, maybe I, I don't want to have all expo exposure to Bitcoin. So I keep part of my money in a stable currency that I don't lose so much inflation in the in the so that's the stable coin and we think the the stable coin and it's not something that we think the, you you everybody knows that the demand for stable coin is is booming all over the world and mm -hmm. especially in Latin America is is like mm. twenty billion in Argentina in Venezuela Oof. in any, in Lebanon Nigeria any uh, any country where you don't have where you have capital control, where access to, uh, you know, if you live in Canada or if you live in the United States or you live in Europe and you tell, well, US is a, a strong currency and you laugh because you have 10% <laughs> yes. inflation or, or five. But, you know, if, if you are like us that we have 50 or 100% inflation or like, uh, uh, like, like Venezuela that has, 50,000 that are living in hyperinflation each day. Uh, for us, uh, for the normal people here in, in Argentina, in Venezuela, is strong currency. Yes. So that's the stable coin. The market is there. Uh, a lot of people need it. And also in the crypto market, but not only in the crypto market. Now we are working, for example, in an initiative in Venezuela. Because in Venezuela, for example, now uh, I know it, it, I was, uh, it's incredible. But now if you go to Venezuela and you pay, you pay with dollars, there is no change. Uh, there is no change because there is no agreement with US and there is no coin. So they don't have a change to give you and they have to give you something else or, they, or you lose the change. If you pay $10 and it costs $8, they don't have coins to give you the change. And there is no, 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 uh, the, the people is is using only uh, digital money, okay? So stable coins is, is really really important in that kind of context. So th that's stable coin. Then the other token, which is a Bipro. The Bipro, when we designed it, 
and it's essential in our in, a, in our project because if there is no BPRO holders, it's impossible to issue dollar on chain. So if you want to build a DeFi protocol with a stable coin, you need someone to put uh, the collateral. So when we sign that, uh, actually there was a question that I made to my partner who is a long time Bitcoin. I asked him, okay, what, what would you need for you as a Bitcoiner to have to put your Bitcoins here, to put, add liquidity to a protocol? So this token being built, thinking in a long-term Bitcoiner, what would be interesting for, for him? So it has a lot of Obviously, Bitcoiners love liberty, love uh, uh, censorship resistant, but obviously we love money also. So there's a lot of financial incentives for this token to perform okay, okay? And it's been performing great. Last year it has 20%, uh, it won on top of Bitcoin 20% in Bitcoin terms. So mm -hmm. it's, 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 and how it gets that? Well, again, it has free leverage. It has part of the fees of the plot of the protocol goes to a basket that at the end make this token more. Hey, Mar 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 more can, you, can you can you explain free leverage? What does that mean? Because I, I, a bit of me is like, there's no such thing as free type of deal. But like, well, what's <laughs> happening? I mean, you're, there is some risk there, right? Because you're putting it on. on well, like, you, you are, le leverage yeah. is, is risk, of course. Le yeah. If you have Bitcoin and you have leverage. Mm. At the end, if the price of Bitcoin goes down, you will have uh, your, Twice, your token right. will go down much faster. Right. So if you are a long term Bitcoin holder and you get free leverage, it's a no brainer. Of course, there is a risk because if the, this it price go down. goes down, 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 and it's a collateral of this, this mm. will go down faster. But right. again, it's free leverage because who is providing the leverage is the dollar on chain. The dollar, when, when someone issues the dollar on chain, they, they provide leverage to the BPRO. So it, that's why it has free leverage. Normally, to get free leverage, you have to put your Bitcoins in Bitfinex or whatever if you want to go long on the price of Bitcoin, and you have to pay for the leverage. Exactly. So when you say free leverage, you're just talking about the interest that you would normally pay, right? For borrowing money no, or whatever. Is that what yeah, you're talking about? You are not paying an interest to get in that leverage. Got it. Okay. So the, okay. The I just want to clarify doesn't, that. Doesn't pay a, an interest to get hey, that. Manu, I'm thinking of renaming this show to uh, Steaks with Sunny. Uh, do you mind if I eat? I'll put it on mute while you talk because uh, my wife just oh. brought me some food and I haven't eaten all day. <laughs> okay. You okay. Can continue. Put the name you want. It's your show. <laughs> <laughs> continue. Continue. I just didn't want to be rude. <laughs> okay. Okay. But I'm, I'm okay. I'm listening so far. Continue. Um. So, so these different so, actors. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. The, so, so this BPRO has this free leverage. Then I was explaining it has this uh, part of the fees. When you mint a dollar on chain, or you mint the BPRO, or you mint the BTCX, or whatever you do in the platform, you have to pay a fee. It charges is 0.1%, so it's very small the fee, but you have to pay a fee. Uh, 20% of that fee goes to the BPRO. So it makes the BPRO, it, it starts to have a revenue stream to make this token um, to, to appreciate the price of this token, okay? And it's so not Wipro like the Indian company, it's Bpro, right? It's like B, B Bitcoin? B, B the B, Bitcoin, B, Bitcoin Pro, okay? Bitcoin so Pro, got it. Actually, yep. the origin of the name is very, very, very... Uh, we'll, we'll save that one for the next, yeah, for the yeah, follow-up. <laughs> at the end, it was called B, Bitpro and people okay, like okay. it, so we use Bitpro. Okay, I just want to make sure people get that. Yeah. B pro. Okay, continue. Uh, so the second in income is fees from the protocol. The third income is, as I mentioned before, if you are a trader, a leverage trader, you you are going to uh, get part of the leverage from the B pro, and for getting that part of the leverage, the trader have to pay a fee. So that's the second uh, uh, source of income for the B pro. I know, are you familiar with Uniswap and uh, kind of the with that whole ecosystem, AMM and all that? Is is it kind of similar or not really? No. If you need to 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 well, really, the one of the problems of money in chain is that 
this is all new. This <laughs> is 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 Bitpro. There's no other token in the world like Bitpro. We designed this. That's what I'm asking because I, I've gone deep down the Uniswap thing, and I, I find it yeah. interesting and in how they kind of do price. Uh, you know how uh, how they do price discovery and all that. But I'm just curious, like how how is I'm just trying to give people maybe something to kind of gl- grasp yeah. onto. I know it's tough, right? But by the way, people will. Ha- I mean, if they want to go like deep into it, I usually cover it at the end, but moneyonchain.com is the website moneyonchain.com and if you go to to bipro there is a, a summary of the bipro and okay if you want to go sweet deeper there is a articles about how it works yeah okay so, so people yes. can go deep into these yeah. different topics you or whatever okay the, you, actually you can go to the code it's open source it's okay. it. yeah so it, it's all open source so you can go to the code and uh, review and fork it if you want so it's, 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 everything is, is there. It's completely open and we want to, to maintain it like that. Lovely, lovely. So you have the, this third, uh, third uh, source of income that is the, the interest that pays the, this BTCX. And the fourth is, is the, and the last one it still doesn't have a, a price because it's a, a token. The, this protocol has these three tokens the, the DOC, the BPRO, and the BTCX. And on top of that, it has a fourth token that we have not issued yet, that is called Money on Chain Token, or MOC. The MOC is a governance token, but if you are holding the MOC and you are staking this MOC, you will get the other 80% of the fees goes to the MOC token holder. So it's a token that has a revenue stream if you stake it, and if you are holding the Bipro, you will get part of this MOC token. Actually, there is what we call the mock liquidity mining is that each day, a portion of these MOC tokens are going to the Bipro, Bipro holders. And, and, but that doesn't have a price, but people love it. <laughs> Why? Not only for the financial reason, but there it comes the decentralization and the trust minimization. The MOC token holders are the ones that are going to be able to decide the, the future of the protocol. Right now, the protocol is, is, there is no bank accounts, no nothing, it's all in the blockchain, but the agreeability of the protocol is, is not decentralized yet. When we have the MOC token, the holders of the MOC token are the ones which are going to be able to vote and veto on the change. So sorry about this uh, uh, disruption on the BPRO. And the third token, the third actor is the traders. As I mentioned before, the traders are the ones who have this 2x long position on the price of Bitcoin. They pay a fee, this position lasts 30 days, each 30 days it ends, and uh, you have to, to make again these this, this positions, these two X long position. And it's, me- it's meant mainly for Bitcoiners who are trading in BitMEX, in Bitfinex, in whatever exchange. With the biggest difference, again, is this is a open source a protocol residing in a blockchain. You can audit the code. So if you prefer to trust a protocol and not a, not having a, a, cent, a counterparty risk, well, that's the option. So it's a DeFi solution for Bitcoin leverage traders. Okay. Interesting. Very, very interesting. <clears throat> This is definitely, uh, I mean, I, yeah. Uh, okay, what else? And what else on the, um, but I think it's very clever though. I think it's in, very interesting that you've taken things that people already do on centralized exchanges. These are like things that humans are used to. You've figured out kind of how to create an ecosystem, build it on top of Bitcoin. And now, you know, look, I mean, everyone always is obviously against uh, dollars and, you know, rupees and stuff like, especially in Bitcoin. But at the end of the day, like you said, you know, if you really want to serve the masses, you cannot have a cryptocurrency or like some some asset that that drops in value, you know, 30% or whatever in a day or 20%. I mean, you're going to, people are going to need 
something like you said to to buy the coffee or whatever to buy some food and just to be able to pay rent the emergency fund if you will and if you're going to solve those problems obviously you can do it centralized it's easy right i mean everyone you can just it's a digit on a on a on a database but i think to 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 solve stable coins using bitcoin on bitcoin yeah. <laughs> I, I have to tell you the, the truth. When, when we started this, I was like uh, three months uh, researching Google uh, to see if someone else had built it. And I was, it blew my mind that no one else had built it. And then when we were like the the rest of, we, 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 we worked like two years for building this protocol. And during that building, I was all, all, one of my biggest nightmare was someone else is going to announce that they already have the Bitcoin collateralized protocol, uh, stable coin. And at the end, no one appears. I, I don't see anyone who is building something similar. And really, I don't, I really, when you really understand the protocol and you understand all the complexities involved, it's not us easy task is really, really difficult. Uh, that's why I say that my, my partner is a genius. It's, it's not easy to, 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 to build, to have the mind to build all these parts. But yes, uh, obviously uh, it has risks. Uh, it's like Bitcoin. Bitcoin in 2009, it was not so secure as Bitcoin in, two, in, in 2021 because it has the process of hack, uh, of consolidation of, of reviewing of the software. Uh, it has already a lot of time. Uh, it's more than one year running and audits is a bounty. But it's a, I would say it's a different proposition. It, it, especially for people in, in, in countries like, as I mentioned, in, in Lebanon, in Nigeria, and whatever, where censorship resistance is important. One of the biggest problems of these other uh, cent uh, centralized stable coins is that you have a very, very easy way to censorship that money. Bitcoin, what's the magic of Bitcoin? Is that it's censorship resistant. Well, we, what we are building is a stable coin, which is censorship resistant. I think you are mute, Sunny. Oh, sorry, man. Uh, no, I was going to say there's a project called Badger that recently came across my uh, radar. And it's kind of like taking Bitcoin onto the Ethereum network. So th there's, you know, but, but no, no, I haven't. I, I mean, I feel like I have a pretty good pulse on the net on the network, yeah, on the kind of, you know, Bitcoin scene, crypto scene, whatever. And I haven't heard this being done either. Um, you know, I mean, maybe, you know, someone will come out and say, hey, there's this person, that person, but I think it's very unique. Um, okay. And, you know, and, and for me too, like having kind of, you know, by the way, hey, Manu, are you there? Sorry, it didn't freeze, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. here. No, I was going to say is that, uh, no, 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 okay. I just want to make sure. Um, uh, yeah, no, I, I like this. I love this idea. And I was going to say, by the way, I'm not technically Indian, like I'm from Canada, I'm Canadian, but my parents are from India and I did start, you know, one of India's first kind of Bitcoin exchanges, Bitcoin platforms. Um, but, uh, you, know, you know, as a child, we used to visit India, like growing up and I've seen a different side of the world than, you know, my Toronto or whatever, Canada view. And I've seen that, you know, like, you know, even though banking and all that isn't everywhere, obviously phones are very, very ubiquitous now and they are everywhere. And so if you're able to like, you know, Bitcoin, our dream was always bring Bitcoin to billions. But this was always like a little thing in my head. It's like, well, how are you going to bring it if there's so much volatility where I agree, like if we, once you have, you know, whatever, but I, like, yeah. Okay. Anyway, so I'm, 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 I think I'm fast. I'm super fascinated. I think it's amazing what you guys are doing. Anything else, Manu, you want to share about money on chain, about the project? And by the way, you mentioned Nick Zabo's name a few times. Isn't he the guy who essentially invented like the idea of smart contracts or something? Like he's, he's iconic, right? Like he's like, yeah, not like a, yeah, just like a, yeah, oh, like I, a neck I, down the street. <laughs> I, I, I would say that uh, I, I mentioned Nick, uh, I'm not a technical guy. I mean, I'm not a programmer. I know that he's the one who who beat, who who 
invented the concept of smart contracts. Um, and I, I read a little bit, but what I am most fascinated about Nick is, uh, you know, maybe you have read uh, the, uh, I can remember now the, 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 the name is a very, very famous uh, in, in, in Bitcoiners, uh, the, 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 about the origin of money, the history of money. Um, chilling out, chilling out. I don't know if you have read it. Chilling out of Nick Sauer. Chilling out? Chilling, chilling out. I chilling out. Yes, I think I have read it. I've gone through his blog. It's been a few years, to be honest. Yeah, but, exactly. uh, Nick Zabo has a great blog. And didn't he have a blog titled Bitcoin, like Bit Space Coin, like, I don't know, a few uh, years before? Uh, I don't know. I... The, the blog is, is numerated. I mean? It's called, but if you go to Nakamoto Institute, you, you will find a lot of links in Nakamoto Institute. But I read it, and always when I have time during weekends, sometimes I, it's, it's like something really interesting to read is, is what Nick have wrote, wrote even before Bitcoin exists. Uh, so a lot of the ideas behind Bitcoin, I have read it in, 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 in Nick's uh, documents be, be, even before Bitcoin. So I don't know who is uh, Satoshi. I don't want to know. I think that it's, it's good for humanity that no one knows who is. But a lot of the ideas behind Bitcoin are similar to what you can read in, in a lot of Nick's uh, papers. Um, and yes, I, 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 it's, it's, it's very interesting ideas behind these papers. And, and a lot of explaining what is money when, when you, Always, uh, for example, here, um, um, the dollar is a currency, it's not money, it's a currency. And what people need, and we don't, we, as the, the founders of Money and Chain, we don't see that uh, it's going to be something that's going to change in the short term. Because government, governments are not going to disappear. Governments are continuing to issue currency, which is the dollar, which is the euro, which is whatever. But we think that Bitcoin is money, it's not currency. And it's not made for, for, for trading, for buying the pizza. It's not something that is, is useful because you need a unit in a, of account. And on that sense, currencies, what the government issues, is, mm -hmm. is, is quite stable. So we know that in the long term, this de depreciate. I don't have my most of my wealth in actually in Latin America, everybody, not even in dollars, they have in real estate, the people who has money because it's not something that is so easy to devaluate. But currency devaluates, if you live in Argentina, very, very fast. If you live in the United States, maybe you don't realize that it's devaluating every day. Uh, and the good thing about Bitcoin is that it's good money and good uh, reserve uh, of, of a store of value in the long term. But for day-to-day -day trading and for Bitcoin to go massive, you need to have something similar to currencies. And in Latin America, we don't see, and I, I, I know that people, people in Venezuela is trading with Tether, is trading with DAI, is trading with dollar and chain. They are trading with, because if you go to, to what we call in Argentina, Doña Rosa, Doña, Doña Rosa, does not understand the volatility. They don't want to have, they have already many, many problems. No, keep Bitcoin because in four years it's going to be worth a lot. No, no, I, I need to, to pay the bills tomorrow. So I cannot have this volatility. I already have many, many other problems. So if you're a Bitcoiner, the thing interesting on dollar and chain is uh, that you are using Bitcoin at the end and it's censorship resistant. So, mm. and, and it's, it's decentralized. So if you are a Bitcoiner living in, in, in Argentina or in, in, in Venezuela, it's a no brainer using a stable coin because, uh, you know, any Argentinian try to avoid a bank because you cannot trust institutions. You cannot put your money there because tomorrow it, it could disappear. So, mm. The, 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 the magic of, of, of uh, censorship resistant or of, of, of uh, someone cannot steal your money, 
that's something very, very interesting on, on, on stable coins. But we think that most of the other stable coin has a huge risk if you are a Bitcoiner and you understand that at the end, there is a centralization point. Okay, so that's the, I would, if you ask me, okay, but why people don't use Tether? Well, I don't trust. It's not something with Tether, I don't trust anything. I prefer to trust software. So um, that's the, 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 the main idea be, behind. And then in the process of building this is that we, we came up with this product, this token, which is called Bpro, which is for us is like mind blowing because it's, it's producing a lot of, 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 of interest for, for, for Bitcoiners, for getting more Satoshis. It's a, it's a decentralized way how to ma make more Satoshis. You can go to BlockFi, you can go to, there is many options and many Bitcoiners doing a different mm -hmm. things. But this is uh, the, 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 again, the, the proposition is, okay, you can do it, this, in a de decentralized hey, Manu, I have a question. So, like, so you have what then? How, what fiat currencies are on money on chain? You know what I mean? Like, like are you able to say that or I don't know? Regarding the stable coins? Yes. Well, the, the, stable, the stable coin right now is only US dollar, the, 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 the is pegged to US dollar. Mm -hmm. uh, again, is no fiat at all in the in the protocol. We don't touch. We don't have bank accounts. Nothing is all residing in, in the blockchain, mm -hmm. uh, and we have a lot of demand uh, from users from the community. For example, um, as Argentines and as Latin Americans, which are most of the team, uh, we 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 got into Spanish uh, speaking and in Spain. Uh, communities and a lot of, of people in Spain are asking for euro chain and if we go to talk with Mexicans they ask for the Mexican on chain because in those countries they still have like a currency in Argentina if we talk about building the peso chain that actually we thought one one day it, people laugh <laughs> you're not going to build that shit coin on chain but in, in other countries, like in, 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 in Europe, in, and the plan, yes, of course, people is using other, other currencies. And our plan is to, to issue also that, to, to, to produce that protocols too. Uh, that's in the, in the Roma. And it sounds Maybe like the like issuance, it sounds like the issuance process is a bit centralized though. Like, as in you have to make no, a decision, no. like I'm trying to get to the heart of like, what does that look like? Like, let's say no, I'm somebody no, listening not, in a basement, yeah. some random country and they're like, <laughs> I want my country on money on chain. Can they take no, action no, or do no. they have to call you and, you know, figure things out? <laughs> no, no, it, it's not, not, not that we are going, to, actually we don't issue anything. We don't issue no, the BTCX, no, the that's what I'm, Pro, yeah. No, so, how does that work exactly? So, how does a new currency come into existence? Like, yeah, I'm curious about that. <laughs> well, you as a user, you you mean uh, I can show you maybe later I, if you want, I connect my, my computer and show you how to issue, how to mean, how to no, be. but I guess my question is can anyone do it? Like, is it is that anyone, part of it anyone, open source? Yes, so, anybody can, anyone. if they're like, hey, I want something on my card, they could technically launch a similar ecosystem. Yes, it, it, it's, it's, is not uh, well now it's much easier if you already have rbtc you send rbtc to the smart contract and it sends you whatever you want if you want you you interact with a with there is a desktop app app of you have defiant uh, wallet and you interact you can send bitcoin and swap it for dollar chain or you can mint the dollar chain using rbtc what you are doing is you are being your like your own central bank. You are minting dollar on chain. A token sending RBTC, you are minting dollar on chain, or you are be minting Bpro, or you are uh, minting uh, uh, a 2x leverage position. Uh, and if you want to redeem it, you send these tokens to the protocol, and the protocol will send you back uh, the RBTC, okay? The, the smart Bitcoin. Uh, then, in certain uh, conditions, you may not be able to redeem some of these tokens, and I, that's why we built a decentralized exchange, which is called TEX. So you can exchange in that 
text uh, because this is uh, what is called an R. A C20 token of Rustoc. You know, most tokens are known as a e e ERC20. This is an R C20 token. But it's a token, it's travel. You can, but the process is by your own. You send a RBTC and you get the other token. It, and, and sorry, and regarding uh, the, yeah. the, the, the euro that you were talking to me, is that we need to, to write the, the protocol. We, we need to write the solidity code. We need to implement a, 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 an app for someone to, to interact with this protocol. But it's not that we are going to mint the euro chain. The euro chain is going to be mint by whoever wants to use it. And that is one of the actually one of the biggest difference on our protocol to other protocols, other stablecoins, is that most of the other stablecoins, the issuance of Tether, I don't know if you interact with Tether or whatever or USDC. If you have Tether, you have 10 Tethers and you want to get back your dollars, you cannot send the Tethers to a software and get automatically $10 in your bank account, right? Right, I agree. You, it's someone who had minted before, which is Tether Corporation. Mm. In this, in, in our case, you are interacting automatically, uh, automatically and, and directly to with through software. There is no intermediary. That's mm. one of the is is all software. It's all protocol. Mm. Uh, it's like Bitcoin, but different. And if somebody wanted to harm it, let's say, like, I mean, you know, the Bitcoin white paper was just pulled from a website. I'm just wondering, like, what would be, like, where are the, uh, you know what, let's say that one for part two, we can get more deeper into some of these attack vectors and how you're thinking about it. But hey, uh, Manu, you know, was there anything else? I just realized, wow, we were already like an hour and 10 minutes into this. How, um, was there anything else you wanted to share on the Money on Chain project? I don't know, just the story uh, behind that and... I think this being We're good. Like a, a wild ride and wild no, ride. I, I can talk hours, but I think as an introduction it, it's, it's a I, good one. We, we, we cover a lot. Awesome. Uh, the only thing that I always ask because it's, it's, uh, sometimes people ask, okay, how can I help? Mm. Right. Use it. If you like it, talk about it with your Bitcoiner friends. That's that's uh, the, 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 the way how you can help, how you can support the pro project is at least test it. Actually, you can test it in, in the testnet. There is a testnet, no, so don't, don't need to, to risk your Bitcoins. But we made this protocol for Bitcoin, for Bitcoiners. We think Bitcoiners. it's something that Bitcoin needed. We as Bitcoiners need it. Um, well, I'm very happy that now we are reaching people like you and helping us to spread uh, the world. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, okay, so let's just switch gears again. So the, the next question I had was, um, you know, what is one truth that you hold that most others in Bitcoin would disagree with you on? <laughs> and I mean, in some ways, I guess just a smart contract on top of Bitcoin is probably, um, <laughs> uh, what's it called, unorthodox or contrarian in, in itself. But but any any comments on that question in terms of what is one truth that you hold that others would disagree with you on? Uh, other Bitcoiners? Yeah. Um, well, I, I think uh, a lot of Bitcoiners are uh, quite... Uh, uh, and I've been told to be like a maximalist. Um, and I don't think that is good. I, I share a lot of the views of Andreas that the innovation process, Andreas Antonopoulos, the innovation process, and actually what Ethereum does and other projects is if, if Satoshi did not build Bitcoin, I have uh, tested this and then came. Uh, Halfini and then came the other people and tested and at the end it was and 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 the crazy ones the 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 my my partner and the Gitos and we don't build this innovation Bitcoin wouldn't be where we are now so I really love a, a lot of these projects when they are honest when they are a little scam I don't like it but I think really innovation 
uh, what not for what we are building. Hopefully, what we are building is great. But I like to see, okay, what is doing Ethereum? What is doing Maker? What is doing uh, other projects? Because they are doing innovation. And innovation is how humanity progress by try and, er and error is how the history of, of, of the humanity is being built. So I, I think, uh, again, if there is no real scam be behind, is there is no bad intentions, but it's really about the, the progress, uh, we need to support more uh, challenges. Uh, I, I see a lot of, for example, people critique a lot sometimes RSK because they talk about, well, but you have these signatures on, but we are trying to do something new. Uh, why don't you give it a try? Uh, open your mind a little bit. Don't be so close-minded. Uh, that's something that uh, among, especially about a lot of Bitcoiners are very, very close-minded. Uh, and I like- I, uh, I heard. I heard uh, Balaji say something this morning on Twitter that, that I like. I think he's used the word freedom maximalist. You know, I'm a freedom maximalist. Not, not a, I mean, if Bitcoin gives that us that, that avenue towards attaining freedom, then, then I'm a Bitcoin maximalist as well, you know, but at the end of the day, we're all out for freedom and freedom means, you know, means building. It means continually like adapting, growing. Mm -hmm. And it's the money again. If if you want to use Ethereum, whatever, mm. I, or, or or Tron, or, or Cardano, or whatever, it's their problem. Let them people do whatever they want. They let them test it. Of course, if there is a a, a clear, um, so it, it's uh, I I I I don't want anyone to tell me what is wrong and what is right. Let me take my conclusion and I like also to make a uh, failure. So I, I, I don't like the, this, uh, anybody telling me what is right and what is wrong. Uh, and well, th this is some, sometimes a uh, contrarian in these uh, communities in both sizes, in, in both sides, so, so, sorry, in, in, in Ethereum, uh, that talk about the maximally so I I'm, I quite I don't try to give uh, too much uh, to that but to, to give too much attention but I, I think it's not good is 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 contrarian to what you have said to 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 freedom maximalist if you are a freedom maximalist uh, you don't want to impose your views to other people yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I mean, I think people do it from the right place. And, and, and in some ways, I, I like the fact that there are these like guardians of Bitcoin that are really, <laughs> really, really hardcore, um, yeah, you know, yeah. because it's like the movie 300. I don't know if you've seen it. You know, I just picture them like that, but they're digital and like kind of all over the world. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Probably like just keyboard warriors, yeah. but still, it's all good. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> But at the same time, I think I just love the idea of Bitcoin. I can't get it out of my head. And I, I, I can't feel like it's also just the beginning. And oh, OK, so I think that's a great one. Um, what do you think about AI much? AI, uh, yes. Uh, not so much now. Actually, I know that uh, Max want to, <laughs> to put AI to money on chain. I, I get like crazy because sometimes you will want to have control. My problem with AI is that when it works, when it's real artificial, you are not in control anymore. Mm. Uh, and so hey, uh, Max is your co-founder, the other guy, the guy you keep yeah, talking yeah. about, the, the, the bright mind. <laughs> Yeah, that's the problem. Hey, yeah. does he do interviews or is he? I mean, there are a lot of Bitcoiners who kind of don't no, like to come on. Interview. He does, but uh, I, I'm more, I like to talk more. And, uh, it's and, okay, okay. And he will give you short answers and he will speak <laughs> more, much more what he, uh, because he thinks before speaking, not, not, uh, I'm not, sometimes I don't do that. <laughs> uh, I say whatever it's in my mind. But yes, regarding AI, um i hopefully it it has a slow a uh, slow development mm. because at the end uh, if machines really develop 
Uh, hopefully we can make something like iRobot. I, 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 I'm a big fan of Isaac Asimov. When I was small, I read all the books. So cool. you might have read uh, iRobot. Uh, so if, if we can put these three rules, not harm humans or whatever, uh, and it works, it, it could be really, really interesting. But if the machines learn a bit more than we, well, that that is a, a, a an event where <clears throat> people will disappear. Humanity is going to disappear as a race. Uh, I think we are very, very far from that time. But in other respects, machine learning more what is uh, putting programming things, uh, which is not a rare artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence for me would be an iRobot, what is Asimov. And I think we are very, very far from that. Um, in the short terms, I was seeing, for example, the Tesla, how it comes if we, uh, it was a video on the internet the other day that it was amazing. It was uh, a rainy day, it was all full of, of, of water. So he couldn't get to the car and so he calls the car. So, uh, and that could be something in that case, it's not life changing, but it could be like life changing. Mm. Or if you are an old person and you need to travel, if you are 80 years old, maybe you cannot travel and having a car that gets you whatever you need is amazing. And this is technology that is already there. So if you are talking about artificial intelligence on that sense, I think it's amazing. If you are talking about real artificial intelligence, uh, a robot, uh, an autonomous robot with the capacity of, of thinking by, by themselves, I think it's a huge risk for humanity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I agree. I think it is a big risk, but it's also potentially, you know, um, potentially very exciting too. Um, uh, yeah, OpenAI, have you played with it? I, I recently got access. It's pretty cool. <laughs> I'm not really open anymore. They should call it closed AI, right? I think Microsoft bought their back end or something. But hey, didn't didn't Microsoft buy buy GitHub too? So does that mean Microsoft owns Bitcoin? <laughs> I don't think Microsoft owns Bitcoin. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Man, Satya, Satya, what is it, Nadella? He seems like a smart guy. Every time I hear him talk, I he just... seems a very smart guy. Actually, yeah. he, he, his move to make everything more open source is, is the right move. Yes, he's exciting. He's exciting. Um, okay. Uh, oh no, I, I just one more thing. So another thing I think about, um, and you know, and I think this was more of a cliche topic, maybe even like six months ago or a year ago. Um, but this idea of universal basic income, okay, not necessarily dictated by governments where people are being forced to, you know, give their money and then give it to other people, not that, but what if there was some sort of voluntary mechanism built on top of Bitcoin, perhaps, right, that had some way where people could, um, like donate or something, right? Like people could literally voluntarily donate and, and it could feed some sort of like universal basic income, right? But not only just universal basic income, but where like maybe, I don't know, I, I, I feel weird always talking about this, but it's like, but it kind of something I think about a lot, which is, um, you know, where even like profits of like automation and AI, things like that, a certain tiny percentage of it goes programmatically towards humanity. You know what I mean? Because like, I, I'll tell you one thing that bugs me, and I know most people don't think about this stuff, especially in Canada and whatever, because we don't see poverty like kind of at the same level as let's say places like India and uh, otherwise. But, you know, now with COVID too, right? Like universal basic income has kind of taken place in places like Canada to some extent, right? Like a lot of people are getting checks from the government. In the United States, you're hearing about it. So I, do you, have you thought about this much? Is this ever even like entered your consciousness? Like, I, and I think about this in the context of more so like the evolution of AI, right? And if you like, I, I have a Tesla, by the way, I, I'm like obsessed with robots. My wife, who's from Colombia, is a mechatronics engineer. I probably have every robot you can imagine right now in my place. Um, but but I, but I also, I, I spent eight years working in robotics. I've been to every major robotics lab in the world um, or all the, a lot of them. And I kind of see where this is, this is going. And, and I, I, and I think, and I don't think I'm a Luddite to say that, you know, it could be an existential threat 
my fear is now if two governments and five companies are going to house all of this data for everybody, isn't that like, isn't that scary? Like, shouldn't there be some, some, I guess, I guess I'm saying a lot of things, by the way, but my, my, my question is, I, I, I think Bitcoin, especially now, if you bring things like stable coins could eventually lead to the, like, you know, even guys like Jack Dorsey are saying things like Twitter should not be like that. It should be decentralized. Like that's why he loves Bitcoin. So I feel like we're at this like cusp where humanity is going to start to maybe even realize that a lot of what we do can be done in a much more decentralized way. I'm going to pause there because I'm just going on a rant. <laughs> Did any of that make sense or was I like on mute? <laughs> Uh, no, no, you, you, no. I was listening to you. Uh, my experience for the first question that you you made about the the universal income. Um, I, I, as I mentioned, I, I worked two times in my life for, for government, uh, and my, my experience is that first free lunch doesn't exist. That's something that really doesn't exist. And the inefficiencies of the go governments are huge. Of course, you don't see so much maybe in developed countries because there is so much money. But uh, I, I, you don't you see, see what happened in the US in the capital last week. Uh, yeah, well, okay, what do you mean yes. we don't see much? Come on. <laughs> But we got our have share. Money to support that, right? right. You, you have the money to. It's, it's, it's something okay. You have. You are a rich country, mm. so you can. So you are a rich citizen who have money to pay that taxes, okay? And and, and normally in most of these uh, countries, the level of corruption is much level, much lower than than. Right. Uh, not only the level of corruption, but the the level of efficiency of the government is much. The efficiency of a German state is much, much higher than the efficiency of, of uh, underdeveloped countries like Argentina or Venezuela, whatever. So I, I, I work in, with shanty towns. I work with people with very, very uh, low income, very, very low income. Of course, maybe not in the level of uh, in India. I cannot imagine in some, 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 uh, neighborhoods in India should be much, much lower, but I, I work with that. And really, people in that low income appreciate much more when they earn the money. So for me, provide, providing, uh, giving a free lunch is, first, it's not free. And then I think the incentive for, for development of the, of the, of humanity is not good. It's, it's not it does not produce at the end, the, the, the cycle at the end, it starts to go each time worse. Interesting. So, yeah. of course, if it is a 80 person years old and has diabetes and has low mobility, mobility and a lot of problems, okay, I'm okay. But if it's a 30 years old and so universal income for me is, is no, I'm, I'm not going to give universal income to someone who go and work, make make your money and make your future, because I'm not helping uh, him. It's, it's a, a basic principle. But I guess I'm saying it more in the sense of like, like, for example, with COVID, right? This is a, probably a perfect example, you know, where people are literally not allowed to work, right? Like people, we're in a situation where people are literally being told that they can't operate their restaurants or whatever it is. Um, and what I'm saying is that's something that's imposed upon by government because of the pandemic, et cetera, et cetera. But in the future, what if this AI, this, like, for example, just like driving cars is, is, is a job that a lot of people have. We just talked about Tesla driving itself. What if five years from now, you know, 80, some kit comes out where you can even make your un, un, you know, whatever your normal car into a Tesla. Um, so now all of a sudden, like the technology is available to, for mass displacement of work and jobs. And that really concerns me and worries me, you know, as like, and again, and the, 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 the story has always been, well, you know, the free market will solve it. And, you know, people will, uh, you know, have to kind of like outpace it. And those people will become programmers or something, right. The truck drivers. 
um, I don't know. I, I just don't know why. And, and I'm not even talking about those lazy people. I'm talking about like the 10 year old kid that has no money or food on the table or something. And he just needs to survive. Like, we're going to look at him and be like, ah, th- th- you got, you're, you're lazy. You know, you're, uh, <laughs> well, you gotta work harder, buddy. <laughs> so uh, I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. As I mentioned, I'm not against uh, providing support and, and, and welfare to, to really people in need. I am mm. not that kind of person. I, 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 I work for, for the government. Yeah. I think in politics, and I, I think uh, the, 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 the free market is not perfect. I, mm. I think there is a, a reason why uh, humanity have uh, uh, been agrouped with, with governments, and there is a reason why we have taxes and mm. there's a reason why we have uh, democracies. I, I'm not an anarchist. I, I don't think the in anarchy. It, it doesn't work like that. Uh, I think Bitcoin is great and I think uh, separation, much more separation between money and state is great. Mm. But I, I, I think society uh, needs to, to organize in, in a way. Hmm. And I think about providing welfare, but I don't think about universal income. It's, it's not something... You know, I, I, I brought this up, I think, with Max Kaiser. He said, I don't like universal basic income. I like universal Bitcoin millionaires or something like that. <laughs> everybody should just get Bitcoin, earn Bitcoin, and then they'll become no, millionaires. It, Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> it, it's not... It, I don't think it's, 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 it's good effort. There's so many, many things that you can do differently. Mm. Uh, I, I think more on, 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 on providing, uh, if, if, if we as societies organize, I think more about providing tools to the people and mm. not money. Uh, and maybe tools with, with knowledge or whatever. Of course, mm-hmm. there's some basic things that everybody, uh, and that's why of, the development of humanity, of, of, of having a, a, a food and having a shelter. So, so, that's why Canada works so well, is as such a, and Germany and all the welfare states. But uh, printing money is not, is not, and any money, I don't see that Bitcoin can print for everybody for free. Yeah. It's not, no, no, I agree. Well I, well, I mean, if you have a stable coin, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but we don't print money. Uh, people exchange a Bitcoin. Uh, mm. for, for, they, they send Bitcoin and they get Bitcoin in a, in a stable price. But, and, and the risk is taken for other actors. But we don't print money at, at all. Mm-hmm. The only people who is printing money are the states that are printing yeah. papers and they are producing what they are producing is inflation, which is I, 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 I used to be against money printing until I discovered Bitcoin. <laughs> now it seems like, oh, Janet Yellen's in power. Woo-hoo! Like <laughs> bullish. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, yeah, I'm playing yeah, a bit of a devil's yeah. advocate. No, I definitely agree with you, man. I, I think that, uh, but listen, I want to be mindful of your, your time as well. I think we're already over by a bunch of minutes here. Manu, uh, I, by the way, I'm down to do a part two because, you know, to go deeper into some of this, or if there's someone from your team that you want to, you know, maybe even uh, do a follow-up with, whatever it is, uh, I'd love to go deeper into this because I mean, whatever it's worth, I think it's super fascinating. And uh, yeah, I think more people should learn about it, if nothing else. I think it would be great to, if you want to interview Max, and uh, maybe you can talk with artificial intelligence with, with him. He, he will have- <laughs> I don't know much about it, about. But I just like it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you can talk about astronomy. And uh, there's so many, many, many things yeah. about batteries. Yeah. Electricity. <laughs> and you know, I think Nick Zabo, he used to follow me on Twitter. Maybe he does still, but like, man, Nick and, and um, anyone, and of course, any Bitcoin core developers are, are listening to this or anybody wants to, to you know, uh, come on or whatever. Yeah, feel free to. But anyways, Manu, I really appreciate it. So Manu, co-founder of Money on Chain, really easy to remember, at moneyonchain.com. Where else do people learn about you? Like Twitter and do you guys have... Well, uh, we have a... Uh, on Twitter, money on chain, okay, and and there we tweet a little bit, and we have two Telegram communities, one in Spanish, obviously because we are all Latins, is very very active. Sí, si, sí, si, señor, sí, si, señor, no problema. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> all I got. That's all I got. <laughs> and then we have the at money on chain. 
uh, uh, in Telegram community, we, we, it's also active. But from awesome. our web page, there is all, all the community. So go to the web page, uh, and from there, you, you can find. But the, if you want to chat, go to the Telegram group. Okay. Cool. Okay, man. Thank you very much, I guess, for your time. And like I said, we'll do a follow-up whenever you're ready. All right. I'm just Wait. stick around for two seconds. I'm going to kill the recording.